Hey friends, it's good to see you. Uh, I just wanted to talk today because I know it's been a really strange time with the coronavirus and not going to school and missing your friends and then seeing some scary things maybe on the news as far as race and racism and maybe you've seen some things on the news about protests and maybe you've seen it outside of your home or maybe you've even gone with your family to a protest yourself um, and I think it's important for us to talk about why people are gathering in these protests and a lot of them are very sad and angry about black people in this country not being treated fairly for the color of their skin. Um, there's a big problem in this country and really in a lot of countries around the world with racism. And racism is when people get treated differently because of the color of their skin. And it's not fair and it's not right. So I think I found a book that's really helpful for us to understand that while there are a lot of different people around the world and in our own communities that may have a lot of differences and look different inside, we're really all the same. And it's important to focus on our similarities so that we can help each other and be kind. So today I want to read Let's Talk About Race by Julius Lester and illustrated by Karen Barber. Let's talk about race. I am a story, and so are you. So is everyone. My story begins the same way yours does. I was born on, take me for example. I was born on January 27th, 1939 in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm kind of old, huh? Now just remember, when I'm reading this story to you, it's written by the author's perspective. So the person who wrote it is telling the story. This isn't my story. I have a different one. Maybe I'll tell you sometime. How does your story begin? Many people and many events are part of my story and yours too. The names of our parents and where they were born, whether or not we have brothers and or sisters. I had a brother who was nine years older than me, but he is dead. What kind of work our parents do or did, my father was a minister and my mother was a house, housewife. My story and yours have many elements, such as favorite food, mine is fish, hobbies, I like to do crossword puzzles, take photographs and cook, favorite color, red, or maybe green, but I like orange and purple too. And I think my favorite color is all of them. Religion, I'm Jewish. Nationality, I'm from the United States. Favorite time of day is night. That's when all the stars come out. You got the moon and all these stars. Oh. There is something else that is part of my story. It's part of yours too. That's what race we are. I'm black. What race are you? Just as I am a story and you are a story and countries tell stories about themselves, race is a story too. Whether you're black like me or Asian, Hispanic or white, each race has a story about itself. And that story is almost always the same. My race is better than your race. Some stories are true, some are not. Those who say, my race is better than your race, are telling a story that is not true. 
Why would some people say their race is better than another? That's a good question. Because they feel bad about themselves. Because they are afraid. Because. But there are other ways all of us, even me, even you, think we are better than others. I'm better than you because I live in... I'm better than you because I go to school. I'm better than you because I'm a boy. I'm better than you because I'm a girl. I'm better than you because my dad or mom makes more money than your dad or mom. I'm better than you because I'm white. I'm better than you because I'm black. I'm better than you because I'm Hispanic. I'm better than you because I'm Asian. None of these stories are true, are they? They're actually really hurtful. I want to tell a true story, but I need your help. Here's what I want you to do. Take your fingers and press them softly against your skin right below your eyes. Okay, now press gently until you feel the hard bone right beneath the surface. Now, if your mom, dad, brother, sister, or a friend is close by, ask them if you can touch them. Make sure you get permission first. If they say okay, take your fingers and press softly in the same place beneath their eyes. Press gently until you feel the hard bones beneath their skin. Now press somebody someplace else on your body, like your arm, your chest, or your head. Press anywhere until you feel the hard bones beneath your skin. Beneath everyone's skin are the same hard bones. So everyone has a skeleton made out of their bones. If you were to go outside without your skin on, without your hair on your head, turn the page and see what you would look like. But you want to know something? If I went outside without my skin, my mustache, and the hair on my head, what little I have left, I would look just like you. And you would look just like me. Suppose, just suppose, one day we, I mean everyone in the whole world, decided to take off all our clothes and all our skin and all our hair. Then we would do what we normally do every day. Go to school, go to work, play and shop. Everything would be normal except we would look at each other and we couldn't tell who was a man, who was a woman, who was white, black, Hispanic, or Asian. Which story shall we believe? The one that says, my race is better than yours, or the one we just discovered for ourselves beneath our skin? I look like you, and you look like me. And she looks like her and him, and he looks like him and her. And we look like them, and they look like us. When I look at you, which story do I see? Do I see only the color of your skin? The shape of your eyes? The texture of your hair? Do I look like at you and think I know your story when I don't even know your name? Or do I look at you and wonder, what's your name? Where were you born? When were you born? Where do you live? What do you like? What don't you like? Gee, maybe we like and dislike some of the same things. Like, Maybe we both like pizza, 
but maybe we both don't like sausage on top. Who knows? We'd have to talk to each other to find out. Your race is not all that you are. My race is not all that I am. Yes, I am black, but I'm also a man. It's this guy right here, because it's not me. I am of medium height. I have a deep voice and a loud laugh. I love to laugh, don't you? I live in a big house in the woods in a small town. I like pancakes and macaroni and cheese and, and, and. I am so, so, so many things besides my race. To know my story, you have to put together everything I am. Like, I bet you didn't know I have asthma. Beneath the skin, we all look alike. You and me. I'll take off my skin. Will you take off yours? The end. So even though you and I might look really different from each other or anyone else, maybe we look different, maybe we live in different places, maybe we speak a different language, maybe our families look different from each other, we actually find, if we get to know each other, that we actually have more in common than we might think. And even if we don't, we all have the same kind of skeleton. We all have a, a skeleton made out of the same kind of bones in our body. And if you've ever fallen and scraped your knee or your elbow and you saw that the blood that came out was red, just know that every person has that same kind of red blood. So we are much more similar than we are different. And I also wanted to let you know if you feel scared when you see things like protesters on TV or in your neighborhoods, um, just know that they are sad and angry because things aren't fair. Racism is not fair. And they are using their voices to try to make change. They want things to be better for all different races, they want equality, especially for people who are of the black race. So I also want you to know that even if you're a kid or a grown-up, if you're a kid who's small or a kid who's big, you have a voice too. And it's important to talk about these things with your families. You can learn about different kinds of people and you can even make friends with those people and you can draw a picture of what you see or how you feel and you can talk about your picture with someone that you love and if you can write you can actually write about it too you can write a story or about what you've seen in the news or around your neighborhood and the most important thing is to try to speak up when you see something that isn't right, when you see somebody treating another person unfairly, to use your voice, you have the power to say, hey, that's not okay. It's important to point these things out so that we can fix the problems. So even if you feel like you've seen something that wasn't right and you didn't have enough bravery in that moment, you can talk about it later with a family member and then maybe next time when you see something like that, you can speak up. It takes a lot of courage, but you're smart. And I know that you know when something's not right. And I know that you can muster up the courage to help stop things that aren't right. I'm really glad you tuned in today, and I'd love to see you later. Bye.